As we continue our discussion on transport in terms of the cell membrane, we're going to entitle this next flowchart transport 3. And transport 3 is now going to be sort of a shift in our discussion of transport of molecules. Before, previously, we were talking about passive transport. But one thing we have to mention about passive transport, we've talked about what it can transport. Now I just want to briefly mention what PT, passive transport, can't transport what's not good at moving. So what can't passive transport transport? A couple of the things are like large molecules are not good in terms of passive transport. They don't really work. Um, and other things are include like charged ions also are not very well passed using passive non-metabolic energy related, you know, transport mechanisms. Some examples of large molecules would include something like glucose. That's a pretty large molecule. It's not going to be passively transported. Um, it's large. It's polar. Um, it's hydrophilic. So it's a very hard molecule to transfer. And another charged ion, let's say an example could be like hydrogen ion. This is an ion that's difficult to transfer because it's charged and it can't be transported, excuse me, uh, through passive means. We have to do something different. And that difference is going to be now entitled something new that's now actually going to start involving metabolic energy for the most part. Some forms of it won't. But this is a new type of transfer altogether, a new type of transport of molecules altogether. It's called carrier-mediated transport. Carrier-mediated transport is exactly what the name entails. It's mediated. It's done through a carrier of some sort. So let's go through some intro, some background information, so that we have a better idea of what this means. So carrier mediated transport is simply the idea of utilizing or using transport proteins. That's what we're going to do in this process. We're going to use proteins that are specifically there for transport. So it uses transport proteins. These proteins are also going to be known as carrier proteins. There's the name carrier mediated transport. These are carrier proteins. These carrier proteins can be integral proteins. So we learned about integral proteins and they usually are integral proteins. And in addition to that, we want to mention that they actually allow specific molecules to avoid lipid bilayer contact. So I'm going to write that down and then explain it. Allow specific molecules to avoid LB, which stands for lipid bilayer contact. So why would we want some things to avoid contact from the lipid bilayer? What we're basically saying is if we have the lipid bilayer, we're going to have a nice sort of carrier right here, right in the middle of it. Imagine this is our lipid bilayer right here and here. This is going to allow something to enter and avoid contact completely and then go into the cell. So why would we want this? Allow specific molecules to avoid that lipid bilayer contact because this is what's going to allow that molecule to pass Hold on. through the membrane. Pass through or across the membrane. And if we pass through or across the membrane, we are eventually going to end up in the cell, to the cell. So sort of bunching up here, but just overall, just to clear any sort of misconceptions here, we allow a specific molecule to avoid the lipid bilayer contact. This is going to allow it to pass through the membrane and get to the cell eventually. That's the whole goal of carrier-mediated transport, to avoid the middleman of the lipid bilayer. And in addition, there are going to be passive and active forms of this type of transport. Both of them are going to be there. So passive and active. Carrier mediated transport is both passive and active. So we'll look at a couple of different forms of carrier mediated transport. The first one is a passive form that we're going to look at. This one is called facilitated diffusion. So we'll write that down over here. It's called facilitated diffusion. And remember from our previous uh, flow charts that diffusion was passive transport. This is also passive transport, but it's facilitated. And it's facilitated by a protein, a transport protein. So what's going to happen here is that we are certainly going to still be using the energy. We use energy from a concentration gradient. So I'm just going to write CG 
concentration gradient. Should be something we've been saying many times over. That means it's still going to be passive transport, PT. This means that it has to be passive transport because we're utilizing CG, a concentration gradient. But what makes it facilitated? What makes it facilitated is this stepwise process. And we'll look at this process right here. I'll extend this line up to here. So what we can imagine is we have, let's say, a particle. And we'll call this a solute particle. And that solute particle, whatever it may be, is going to combine with the transport protein. It's going to be floating around outside of the cell, and then it sees its specific transport protein that it likes to bind with and binds. So these two bind together. So this process, this next step, let me just fix that arrow a little bit. We're going to straighten that arrow out, and we're going to bind it together. Once we bind it together as a, part, as a particle and a transport protein, we then are going to actually change shape. It actually changes the shape of the protein altogether, of that carrier protein altogether. This is then actually going to now, this shape change, this induced change, is going to now open up the channel. So we'll say it opens a channel. And a channel in this situation just means it opens up a pathway. This shape right here, imagine that this closed part of the rectangle just simply opens up so that we can continue this arrow going down so that it can go into the cell. That's what we mean by open channel. So we have, a, we have the binding, we have the changing of the shape, we have the opening of the channel, and then we finally have the solute flowing through the channel. So solute flows through channel. So it's a little sloppy here, but you get the idea. There's a stepwise process that occurs through facilitated diffusion. The number one thing we want to know is that it's facilitated by this transport protein right here. This is our mediator, okay? This is what's going to allow the item, whatever it may be, to enter the cell. So it's one thing to know the process, a whole other thing to know when it actually happens. So let's look at some basic examples of facilitated diffusion. Aquaporins are a type of facilitated diffusion. We know that water can enter to, through a cell through osmosis. It can also enter through carrier-mediated transport, facilitated diffusion via aquaporins. Aquaporins are pores within a cell membrane that allow the transfer and transport of H2O. Another transport protein that's facilitated diffusion, that's passive diffusion, is GLUT4. GLUT1, excuse me, GLUT1, GLUT4 is another uh, protein, uh, another uh, channel. But the one that's specifically mentioned in your note is GLUT1. This is going to help glucose pass through the cell membrane. So it helps glucose pass through the cell membrane. And then we also have ion channels. And ion channels are absolutely crucial in the nervous system. And the specific one would be a sodium or a potassium ion channel, which just means K. K stands for potassium. And we'll write that down right over here potassium. So overall, um, since we're running out of a little space, we'll do the next video on the next part of carrier media diffusion. What we understand from here is that passive transport can't transport some things. Large molecules like glucose and charged ions. Guess what can do that? Carrier mediated transport. Because it has the ability to be, uh, to allow things to avoid the lipid bilayer contact. So it allows things to go through that membrane to get into the cell through this stepwise process that we talked about, things like H2O, things like GLUT1, things like ion channels. And just don't be thrown off about this aquaporins. You know, you might think, oh, I thought H2O was only through osmosis. It's not true. It actually does go through aquaporins as well as osmosis. GLUT1, remember how we mentioned glucose? It's a large molecule, passive transport. Can't simply do that on its own. It needs the help of something. It needs to be facilitated by a uh, protein. It needs to be facilitated by, excuse me, a transport uh, protein. And that's GLUT1 right here. And that's going to do glucose and ion channels. That's going to be K. K is like, a, actually it's positive. It's a positive charged ion. And that's something that can be easily transported through facilitated diffusion.